If you are old enough to understand that reference, comment down below. Oh no, I ripped it! Okay, if I wasn't beyond excited for this book before, I sure as hell am now. What up, y'all? It is my last day of Mythathon vlogs for the week. Oh, but on the flip side, I'm in a really good mood because I've tested out the accessories that I got in the mail. I didn't show you an unboxing of this one because it didn't come in the mail until after I was finished filming and editing, but this came yesterday. Um, I got this jewel in a bunch of different colors and it's a whole mood. Like it inspired me to put on some lipstick to match it. I'm not a big fan of lipstick, but like, I'm really feeling this look. All I need is a bow tie choker necklace. Like that's literally all I need. Okay, so my outfit of the day is my A Perfect Circle t-shirt, which is like probably my favorite t-shirt, and then just a pair of light powder blue leggings. And then today's donut of the day is, it got some of the Fruity Pebbles from yesterday's donut on it, but it is a orange ginger donut. Yes. Mmm. Oh, so good. So in this vlog, we are for sure going to be finishing To Kill a Kingdom. I only have about 140 pages left. I'm really, really liking it. As y'all know, this is the group book for Team Earth. Now that all the characters are established, the story is moving a lot faster. It is so fast paced and it is so deceptive. I'm really into all of the mind games the characters play with each other. But I am really curious to see how the love develops between Lyra and Elyon because they truly hate each other. Like you absolutely, I completely believe that these characters cannot stand one another. There is so much vitriol and animosity between the two of them so I'm really excited to see how they fall in love especially because Lyra's people don't have a concept for love they literally only believe in power and loyalty and fear so I'm really interested to see a character like Lyra fall in love without sacrificing herself and who she is so as promised in yesterday's vlog we are going to be setting up the ring light and testing how it affects the light difference and then finding a home for the celestial bookshelf lights that I ordered So after spending some time in assembling that ring light, it just, it just ain't it. The lighting just wasn't great and the tripod mount and the phone holder was really droopy. So I would put my phone in it and it would just droop and it was really sad. So <sighs> sadly that ain't it. I put it together while watching booktube. I am currently watching a channel that I'm obsessed with, Jamila from Booked with Jamila. She's incredible. She's absolutely incredible. Please subscribe to her. You will not regret it. But on the plus side, I did get my soft boxes. So I'm going to put together the soft boxes and see if the lighting in that is any better. And as you can see, I just decided to put the lights over on my shelf back there. I think, I don't know. It just, it looked way too cluttered and messy on my bookshelf. And I rearrange my books and I'm always picking through my bookshelves constantly. So to have to gently maneuver around lights is just, it's just too much. I'm not doing that. Okay, so I'm watching one of my favorite booktube royalties. Sage, I love them. And then I got the lights set up. Okay, moment of truth. This is what the lighting looks like from the natural light of the window behind me. And then the artificial light added. This is what I look like. I don't know, I think it's a lot better. What do y'all think? Right, like that's totally better. Okay, so that's just with one of the lights. The other light over to my couch. Here it is. Here's my couch, here's me. Okay, so we're gonna set it here. All right. Let's turn the light on. So this is me without light. And then God said, I think that this is way better. So it's gonna be really good when I'm talking to y'all and I'm having read-ins on the couch and I'll just have the two lights here. And I think for the most part, I will keep filming in this corner here where my bookshelf is right in front of the window. But if a bunch of y'all exponentially prefer this setting, I'll do videos here too. I am so happy. I hope y'all like this. These lights are pretty much a gift to y'all for supporting my channel, for helping me get to 4K, for being my friend, for just being wonderful and amazing. And yeah, I, I don't know why y'all are still here, but I'm glad that you are. Okay, let's test something. Let's see what the lighting looks like when I turn these back off and then we'll get back to reading. 
yeah, with the lights it's better. Whew, all right, that took way longer than I was expecting. So let's do a couple unboxings and then get back to finishing To Kill a Kingdom. So the first package I'm gonna open is from a fellow bookstagrammer whose name is Jessica. I did a Q&A to celebrate my channel hitting 4K. One of the questions that was asked to me was what are my favorite animals? And after I said what my favorite animals were on bookstagram, Jessica reached out to me and was like, hey, I'm gonna make you something based off of your responses. What's your address? So I'm so excited to see what's in here. Okay, I see a hint of purple. Oh my God, it's a jellyfish. <laughs> Look how cute. <laughs> I'm dying, I'm dying. Okay, so my original responses were that my favorite land animal was a moose, my favorite bird is a canary, and my favorite sea creature is a jellyfish. And she made me a jellyfish. <laughs> this is so cute. Oh my God, I wanna like put this on my book. How can I like? make this dangle in a way. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna have to play with this and figure out how I can get this little creature to live. I, maybe I'll put you on my shelf. Yes, that's what I'm gonna do. Cute. My jelly's just sitting back there hanging out with the wicked fox. Oh my God, my jaw hurts from smiling so big. Wow, that is the sweetest thing. Oh, is there a note in here? Oh no, I ripped it. This is why I can't have nice things. I will tape this note back together. It's really cute though. I mean, it was before I, you know, desecrated it. Jesse, when I saw your Insta story about how you love jellyfish, I knew I had a, well, I can read. I knew I needed to send you one. I have a very small crochet business and one of my items is a jellyfish. Anyway, I wanted to send you a gift of appreciation for all the joy and intelligence you bring to the booktube community. I don't have a channel, but you can find me commenting as Ruby Tadpole most places. Jessica, smiley face. Frickin' cute. Super, super cute. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Jessica. This is the sweetest thing. <laughs> I'm gonna tape your note back together and keep it on my bookshelf, okay? I'm sorry that I'm trash. And for the contents of the box. What's in the box? If you are old enough to understand that reference, comment down below. Ooh. Uh, okay, so the first book that I see are The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Janata Pitras. It takes place in Minneapolis, which is basically where I live. And it follows two girls. They are 16 years old. One of them, whose name I believe is Audrey, is living in Trinidad and she's heartbroken and she gets sent to live in Minneapolis after she gets caught with her secret girlfriend. And the other teen is 16 year old Mabel who lives in Minneapolis and she's questioning her sexuality. She doesn't quite understand her feelings for her female best friend. And she just got out of a relationship with a boy. Eventually these two girls come across each other's paths they fall hard and fast for one another and it's about everything from learning your own sexual identity to living in the Caribbean and being Caribbean and then coming to the States and getting identified as black and like trying to adjust to being identified as black it takes place during the summer we get to go back and forth between both of these girls perspectives and I'm so excited especially like ugh, the cover ugh the cover. Oh, and it comes with this really sweet author's note. It says, greeting, sweet friend. Okay, first of all, we love the non-binary friendly greeting. Thank you for that. I'm not gonna read all of it, but I'm just gonna give you the highlights. It encompasses Whitney Houston, queerness, ancestral time travel. Oh my God, is that magical realism? The stars and the blackness between them is an ode to a world I never got to experience, where black girls are lovable and must navigate romantic situations worthy of their complexity. A place where black girls are magical and wild and where black girls can make things happen for each other. May this book love on you and make visible your own blackness between the stars. Love and light to you, Janata Petrus Nassa. Okay, if I wasn't beyond excited for this book before, I sure as hell am now. <sighs> the next book is A River of Royal Blood. Look at it though, look at it though. Yesterday I got to unbox Kingdom of Souls and now I have two very beautiful books with unapologetically black girls on the cover being magical and YOLO and I'm just, and they're just living their best life. That said, let's just take a second to truly admire this cover and all of the details on their persons. Just wow, oh, and I love the text. It, oh, I love that the text is the same color as the shiny dagger that she's holding. So this is a North African inspired fantasy about a 17 year old princess named Eva who is born with dark magic. Dark magic that the world hasn't even seen for like hundreds of years. Now in her kingdom, they have a rival heir tradition, which means that the heirs must fight each other for the throne. This is a trope that I actually really, really like in fantasy and I'm so intrigued by. So in order to ascend to the throne, Eva is going to have to fight her older sister. But when Eva is attacked by a mass assassin, she learns that her sister isn't the only one after her life and she turns to a fae instructor as well as a mysterious prince to help turn her magic into something that the world will fear. Royalty, fairies, and a lot of mythology. Oh my God, I'm so excited. This book also comes with a note from the author, Amanda Joy, A River of 
Royal Blood is my debut novel, a dream that required a whole village behind me, not to mention years of work by black authors charting a path into this industry. The only way to continue in that legacy of excellence is by raising more black voices in every realm of the book world, from authors and librarians to bloggers, bookstagram, and booktube. As the black national anthem reminds us to lift every voice, I encourage us all to raise our mouths to the sky and press our pens to paper. Forget the fear of the people telling us that we aren't black enough or we're too black. Your voice is precious by virtue of being yours. Okay, I'm obviously very excited to have these books in my hands, but I'm even more excited to have these very personal notes from the author because I love hearing from the author's own mouth what their books actually mean for them personally. Then we have Obviously by Akila Hughes. I've seen this book around on Bookstagram and I love the cover. I love the green, but I don't know what it's about. Oh my God, she has a comedic YouTube channel titled It's Akila Obviously. Oh, I'm gonna have to check that out. We also get a note from Akila. Hey there, thank you for taking the time to read obviously stories from my timeline. When I started writing this book, I had a lot of anxiety about writing a good book, presenting my life in a way that was honest and open and about the way it would be received. I hope that this book gives you a laugh and maybe inspires you to continue making bomb ass work with no apologies. So thank you again for continuing for continuing the legacy of black art and creativity and thanks for reading my little book. XX Akila Hughes. Now for the final book in the box, we have War Girls by Tochi Onyabuchi. I have no words for this cover. I have no words for this cover. It's got some weight. I am so excited to dig into this. Oh my gosh. When climate change and nuclear disasters have made the earth uninhabitable, only the luckiest of the lucky have been able to escape into the stars. This book takes place in war-torn Nigeria following two sisters raised in a climate full of political unrest and violence. This book is about their attempts to escape the life that they've always known and to forge a better future by fighting for something more. I am definitely gonna be saving these notes. This one is really long, so I'm just gonna go through the highlights. I entrust you to War Girls, the book of my heart. With beautiful, complex, and complicated blackness in the DNA of this book's insides and outsides, I hope I can say to the reader who holds this thing in their hands, you're heading in the right direction. As I just now got to get loudly and proudly excited about a book, I hope you do the same and that you hear me when I say you're heading in the right direction. Sincerely, Tochi J. Onyabuchi. Also, he has such a beautiful name. I'm excited to read every single one of these books and they come out between September and October. Huge thank you to Penguin Random House for curating this list of books and celebrating these authors and for most importantly, making it so that black bloggers, bookstagrammers, booktubers are able to get their hands on these books because so often, Books that do feature diversity don't make it into the hands of the people that they're actually representing. And that is definitely something that I've seen change so much even within the last year. I've seen publishers be very intentional about getting their own voices books like this into the hands of the readers that they are intending to represent. So it's really awesome that Random House was very intentional about sending this box to black bookstagrammers and booktubers who have been craving this kind of representation for so long. And it just means so much to me that so many of you are just as excited about these books as I am, those of you who aren't even black. I freaking love that. Like I love that y'all are just as stoked about these books as we are. I am going to finish To Kill a Kingdom and then I'm gonna update you and my thoughts and post this vlog. So I love these lights. Even though it's 1030 at night, these lights make it so nice. I'm just, oh, I'm so glad. I hope you guys like them. So this marks the end of my Mythathon vlogs for the week. On day one, I completed Song of Achilles, which meets the prompt of reading a book with an LGBTQ main character. And day three, I completed To Kill a Kingdom, which meets the prompt of reading the group book. Overall, I really, really enjoyed this story. It is so action packed and fast paced, and I would highly recommend it. I'm gonna give it between 3.5 and 3.75 stars just because the villain is so comically one dimensional and it's so hard for me to get behind just any character that doesn't have layers to them. I really liked that this book explored the topics of abuse through metaphors. Definitely would read something from this author in the future. Now these are the last books that I had to tackle and of course they're all big ones but I'm halfway through Imaginary Friend. I did start The Goldfinch when I went out to dinner tonight. I splurged and spoiled myself even though I shouldn't have and I haven't started The Wicked Fox at all. So I'll either do weekly vlogs for the final week of August or I'll do just one big vlog 
blog where I read all three of those books. I'm not sure which I'm gonna do because I have so many other videos planned for August and I don't want everything to just be about Mythathon. I also don't wanna flood your subscription box. Maybe instead of doing a full week, I'll just do another three day vlog. What do you guys want? Do you want to see another full week of Mythathon vlogs or do, you, or do you like me just doing the three daily vlogs? If you made it this far in the video, comment with the word lights because this video is all about setting up these damn lights, which like I love so much. But yeah, my social media links are below in the description box. As always, if you want more daily content from me, follow me on my Instagram, Bowties and Books. I am there literally all the time. Thank you so much for watching and for being part of my Dapper family, and I will see you in my next video.